Hello, we are back with another episode of where I sketch stuff and talk about stuff that I that interests me this week. This is episode three, four, or maybe five, something in that range. But anyway, I didn't post anything last week, mostly because the drawing that you are seeing right now, I wanted to have it done when I talked about the Last of Us TV show. However, I didn't, I didn't get around I didn't get around time to finish it. It was it was it's really hard. Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about the drawing that I recently did. If if, if you're uh, watching this on a screen, you'll see it being developed and drawn as I'm talking. But I had a really 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 hard time drawing the fungus, the the cordyceps virus growing out. I wanted to draw. See, I was inspired by this artist. I I cannot remember his name off the top of my head. I should look it up, but I probably am not. He basically is doing this series as the last of his TV show is coming out where he draws the infected. Now, this guy's a really good artist. I'm talking about like he does like a realistic style of art, uh, art. and he's drawing a, the, uh, the clickers. Well, not the clickers. He's drawing the infected in the stage of progression. So you have, you know, recently infected. You have, I believe they're called stalkers, which is the second stage of infected. And then finally, the third phase of Infected, which is the clickers, right? So he's drawing, I believe her name is Margaret, the from the first episode, the old lady. He was drawing the, the Infected, you know, stage by stage. And I thought, yeah, you know what? I got to give it a shot. Like, he, he does it in a realistic style. Like, he's a really great artist. He, he colored it. He did all this whole, all this whole thing. But I thought, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm going to try to do my own, uh, my own little style, try to practice, try to push myself and draw the clicker right you know just one stage of infection but you know that's all that's all i can manage today but you know that's that's what i'm that's what's in the background right now however going back to the whole reason i didn't post the video is mostly because i wanted to watch one these episodes are the episodes are really long of the last of us and i didn't have time to like binge all of it at one go and two when we, i ended up i ended up catching up to episode four last week you know the week that it came out and then it, it left off on a cliffhanger and it was a cliffhanger where i felt because i played the game so i kind of I, I could guess where things were gonna go and i wanted to wait until episode five which is this week to come out so i could you know talk about episode five and episode everything everything combined up to this point so anyway that's why i didn't post anything last week and you know that's why i'm drawing a clicker right now anyway Going back to the initial point, okay. One of the one of the things I want I want to talk a little bit about what I thought about before the last of the Last of Us TV show. Before I watched the Last of Us TV show, kind of a mindset walking in. Uh, uh, I think it was I think it was my first video I ever posted on uh, this whole series I'm doing. I'm just talking about the week was Velma, right? Velma was an adaptation, right? You know, I tried to say, you know, I want to go into these things with an open mind. I want to go into these ad new adaptations of, you know, video games or old TV shows in a new way with an open mind. Velma let me down. I mean, it wasn't a great... It, it, it's mediocre at best, Velma, but I'm not going to go into that. I already, I already talked about it, and I want to talk about it more. It's mediocre at best, right? However, The Last of Us. The Last of Us is a game that I played. I played it like... Honestly, I... I didn't play it that long ago. Oh, it doesn't feel that long ago. It might have been like a year ago. I played it during the pandemic. Oh shit, that was like two, three years ago. Yeah, no, that was like, okay, that was like a year and a half ago when I played it. Like, I played it like mid-pandemic. I don't know if I'm allowed to say pandemic on YouTube. The rules of YouTube are a little bit weird. Anyway, I played it like mid-pandemic, right? I had just gotten a PS5. I had managed to get a PS5, which is a struggle. Because, you know, everybody who knows in those times, PS5 were just really difficult to get. Even now, I still think they're still a little hard to get. But I managed to get my hands on a PS5. And the only reason I got a PS5 was so I can play two games. The Last of Us and God of War. Those were P I, I was not a PS, uh, PS PlayStation person. I played, I had an Xbox, right? Xbox growing up. So I didn't play The Last of Us until relatively recently. Anyway, the reason... So I played The Last of Us like a year ago. Honestly, I'm gonna say it. I thought the gameplay was good. Okay, it wasn't anything that was like super fantastic in my opinion. But that has to do mostly that at the when I played it, I'd already played other games that had taken inspiration 
from The Last of Us, I could tell that these mechanics that I that I that I thought were just okay or good in the in other games were taken from The Last of Us since The Last of Us came first, right? So I, I thought the gameplay was good. I didn't think it was anything fantastic, but you know, it's an older game that inspired other games. So you know, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it's it, it's old, but not in a bad way, if that makes sense. I'm trying to elaborate my words, trying to trying to make things clear. However, the story and the characters, that's mostly what drives this game. It's a very story-driven game. The gameplay is good, but most people fell in love with Ellie, Joel, and all the side characters, right? And I, I thought the story was good. For the most part, it's a it's very, it's very simple kind of road trip style story, I guess, where, you know, you start off with Ellie and Joel, and then they're trying to make their way to the Fireflies, right? That's the end goal. That's the basic journey, right? You know, they're trying to get point A to point B and all the stuff that happens in between. Now, so I liked The Last of Us. I didn't think it was anything super fantastic because keep in mind, one thing that's happened with The Last of Us game was that everybody said it was amazing. 10 out of 10, best game that they have ever played. So I went into that game with unrealistic high expectations. So I can't say it met those completely unrealistic high expectations, but it was still a good game. So, I like the game, by the way. Side, side note, so we're talking about The Last of Us, but side note, I didn't hate The Last of Us Part 2. I also played it. I played it as soon as I could. Basically, I played The Last of Us 1, then played The Last of Us 2. And I'm not going to spoil The Last of Us 2, but let's just say... It, it, Joel was still fresh in my memory when stuff went down, you know what I mean? Anyway, but I, I didn't hate The Last of Us Part 2. But, going back to The Last of Us Part 1 and uh, what, what I was thinking when the TV show was announced. When the TV show was announced, I'm not gonna lie, a part of me was afraid. It had the same kind of fear that Velma had, but I tried to keep an open mind. Where I thought they were just gonna ruin it, I did think they were gonna add some woke stuff to it. I, I thought that maybe this was gonna be so great. Maybe! Maybe they were gonna ruin this, right? But there was a little part of me, just, just, just you know, just let me listen, let me say it real close. Just a small part of me that thought, if they do this right, this show could be amazing. And I gotta say, they're doing a pretty good job. I mean, episode from episode one to episode five, I cannot say that there has been an episode so far that I say, you know, that isn't good. It's a I binged watched basically well I didn't binge watch I watched episode one through three and then I watched four and five right episode one was amazing all right well no wait let me let me back it up let me back it up just a little bit let me still talk about uh, my mindset before I'm trying to I'm trying to elaborate so one of the things that one of the things that I was worried about is that most video game adaptations that I that most people have seen haven't been great you know, you have your Super Mario Bros. that I think came out in the 90s or 80s. I'm not sure. I, I I remember sitting down and watching it as a kid. It was awful. It was, it was really, 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 really boring. I don't understand. Some people have some, I think, unironic enjoyment of it, but didn't like it. Mortal Kombat. The original Mortal Kombat, the one that I think came out in the 90s again. These are old movies, like before I was born. I'm pretty sure. So, the Mortal Kombat movie, I also saw it. I, I thought it was okay. It was like uh, kind of mindless beam material. Maybe just because I had a crush on Sonya Blade, but who knows? You know, it could be something like that. But I didn't think those movies were great. So far, we're talking about video game movies. Video game movies, the only ones that I've seen personally where I thought, you know, this is actually pretty good. I'm kind of surprised that they were as good as they were, were two big ones. Detective Pikachu. I went in to watch that movie most because the CGI looked just amazing, like bringing the Pokemon to life. I genuinely thought that was just, just amazing. Hats, hats off to the artist, you know what I'm saying. However, it, the story was only okay. The only other reason I went to go watch that, I think I watched that movie in theaters too. I actually paid money to go to a movie theater and watch it. But I think one of the only one of the other reasons was just because yeah, ryan reynolds you know you gotta go support ryan reynolds he's uh he's deadpool so you have to go support him and anyway the other movie this one this one i was genuinely surprised that i liked as much as i did was this the first sonic movie i believe the sonic 2 came out so i haven't watched that one yet i want to but at the same time i haven't really made time to watch it anyway sonic 2 sonic sonic 1 i mean 
I actually really like Sonic 1. Sonic 1 was just a fun movie. Best way to describe it. Well, it didn't have an amazing story. The... Oh, man. I still remember the memes of the original Sonic design. That's one of the reasons I had to go watch it. I wanted to see... Okay. The original design, horrible. New design, great. Let's see if the story... Let's see if the movie is going to be great. And it was pretty good, right? But for the most part, video game adaptations have not been great. Another example that's kind of an example, but not, but maybe not really, is the Witcher TV show. The Witcher TV show is based on books, right? However, if, if those of you who play games, best game series, best game in my opinion, The Witcher Three, is a video game, and they've adapt. They didn't. They never really adapted the story of The Witcher Three, but they did adapt parts of the source material, which is the books, right? First season of The Witcher, I thought it was good. I thought it was great. I thought it could rival Game of Thrones. I thought this show was going places. It went places, but not good places. Season 2 lost me, and Season 3 just looked awful. So, video game adaptations to TV shows was a bit iffy. So, when The Last of Us came out, I was worried. But, I was going to give it a chance. I did it. I I went into this movie with an with an open mind, ready to love it. And guess what? It delivered. Episode one was first of all. Episode one was kind of a slow build. Like it starts off kind of slow, right? Starts off with this intro that wasn't in the. It's at, okay. One thing. It's this. Show, oh man, I'm actually gushing. I have to calm myself down. Give me a second. All right. What was amazing, what I am loving about the show, is that it's adding stuff to the game, to the to the to what the game showed us, but in a fantastic way. Episode one starts with a dialogue about how fungus and how if a, we we really have no counter to fungus growth, right? Like if fungus gets in our system, our immune system doesn't really have anything to combat. You know, I was talking to her, I was talking to my mom. She she was a doctor in Mexico, and one of the things that we we're talking about is that if you get a fungal, a certain fungal infection, we can treat it, right? But, but it's just so difficult to actually completely get rid of it. And it, and it was interesting because this dialogue just completely captivated, and you saw some fear in the. Uh, it's a it's a kind of an interview. So you saw, in the interviewer's hand, you saw you saw fear in his eye, and I just thought that was amazing, right? cut to meeting joel and oh my god i forgot i forget his daughter's name but i think it's abby no it's not abby that's someone else that's someone we don't like anyway i'm gonna say joel and his daughter we meet joel and his daughter right the relationship is great pedro pascal chef's kiss right i am just loving their dynamic small thing small thing I heard people were complaining that they made Joel's daughter black, well, mixed black, whatever you want to say. Uh, that is that is a small criticism. I don't understand why that's a big deal. Because frankly, if you just take away from her, just quickly in your mind, take away that she was black, just look at Joel and their interactions was just sweet. It made you like their relationship, right? I don't think I don't think that you should, you know care as much when you're adapting because you know in the game she's white and they made her black right i think this is a relatively small detail because they got their relationship and they added to their relationship and uh the way they interact in this episode and i felt like that was i don't i don't understand the criticism that you know people were some people some people keep in mind were making it making a big deal of her just being black in this adaptation and pedro Basco, some people were complaining too but let's be honest you're, you're not a good person if you complain about Pe Pedro Pascal. I mean, chef's kiss, like I said. Anyway, I love their interactions. I thought they were just... The, the, the interaction before the outbreak was great, right? And then we move ahead. I'm trying to remember this off the top of my head. It has been a couple of days, but... Then we move ahead. The creepiest scene was the old lady. I think her name is Margaret. Like I said before, it's the one the artist that I was talking about earlier was drawing. That scene where Margaret is in the background just twitching from the fungal infection, just starting to take over her brain, was just, it was creepy, it was unsettling, it was fantastic, right? And 
almost don't want to talk about this part because it genuinely did t get me to tear up, right? But we start moving on to the actual like infection process, right? Like when stuff starts to go down and you get the POV that reminds you, of, uh, just reminds you a lot of the video game, where you, you know you're in the back seat with uh, Joel's daughter and you see the uh, the plane coming down and all that. You know the night. It is just great, right? And then you get to the scene, obviously, where, where I guess spoilers if you're still watching this, because you know I don't understand why you might be watching this if you if you don't want to get spoiled. But spoilers, Joel's daughter just gets put down. That scene was was pretty sad. Not gonna lie, it actually did hit me. That was maybe the second most emotional I got watching this watching the show. Anyway. We cut to 20 years later, we meet Joel back up, you know, everything's, everything's, by the way, looking great in the show so far. We meet Joel, we meet Tess, all this stuff starts going down, that's, you know, that's basically episode one. Skip a little forward here. Episode two. Actually, I think more stuff happens in episode one. See, one of the things that is kind of annoyed me about the show was that the episodes are, they aren't exactly, like, they aren't exactly one hour each episode right they're like an hour and like 15 each episode it's a minor complaint but it's just something out there anyway i think in episode one we still we meet tess i think we get a glimpse of ellie at the end but i think they they actually like get together like ellie and joel like and tess start you know trying to get ellie out of the city into the fireflies i think that starts in episode mostly in episode two because they basically at the end of episode one they're sneaking out of the city in episode two, they start making their way outside the city. Yeah, you know that, that's what happens. In episode two, they start making their way. They start actually traveling outside the city, and that's when they encounter a clicker. Which, by the way, the clickers—they are generally in t more intimidating, I think, in the TV show than they were in the video game. Because in the video game, yeah, sure, they were scary, but it, something about the fact that. Two of the clickers, right, gave Joel and Tess so much trouble. In comparison, in the games, what you're facing like four of them, and they're not that big of a deal. Like you would just sneak around; everything was pretty easy, right? But here, the clickers, one, they look amazing. There's just there's something about the fungus has just kind of a weird, I want to say, kind of a weird and beautiful interaction with how it's growing out of the body. You know, again, the artist amazing in this right anyway the clicker and then the interaction where you know again a spoilers I, I mean i don't know why you're still watching this i'm kind of spoiling stuff right here but you know tess gets bit in and but ellie joel and tess make it to the fight where their firefly people are supposed to pick them up right honestly and, and you know and, and the fireflies are all dead right they died because someone got infected and I know that's one of the tropes that I absolutely hate in zombie media, right? You kind of figure, hey, if you get bitten, right, you'd have the common decency to tell people around you, yeah, I'm about to turn into a zombie, not get mad and try to, you know, take everybody out with you. Because apparently that's what, that's what maybe happened to the fireflies outside the city when they meet up, because they're all dead, right? And it's said to be like, okay, one of them got bitten and then there was a firefight. And I'm like, I'm sorry, the people who got bitten, y'all, y'all deserve to die. People that didn't get bitten, y'all should have noticed. Anyway, small thing, I just don't like the fact that people who get bitten and then hide it, right? Foreshadowing for later, if you know, you know. Anyway, so that's when, you know, you know, at this point, this is infected. And she, by the way, that's one of the changes they made. They, they, there have been a lot of changes so far from, you know, the game and the TV show. In general, I say good changes, right? But, for example, I think episode 2, I believe, I'm believe i pretty sure it's episode 2, starts off with the uh, the initial infection, right? For the most part, in the games, I don't think we know exactly what started the, the infection process, the cordyceps virus being spread all over the world. But in the TV show, we mostly know for a fact that it was happening because of uh, infected flower. Like, we get to go see, I, I think it's Indonesia. I might be wrong there. But we get to see a doctor go to Indonesia and, you know, basically see the first infected, right? She basically, and that scene was just amazing because she says in that scene, like, hey, 
I mean, she basically goes to inspect the infected, the, the dead infected, the infected was put down, and she sees that it's a cordyceps virus, right? And then she's talking to the general and telling him, okay, hey, doc, the general's looking at the doctor and telling her, hey, what what should we do? And the, and the doctor basically responds like, burn the city, man. There's nothing else you can do. There's no cure. There's no nothing. Just burn it down. And the fear in the general's eye, and I felt absolutely depressed when the doctor later just said, I just want to go to see my family before. It's... She basically said, I want to see my family before you start bombing the city because you have, because he was, he was basically saying, you have to take the city down or this, we're not going to be able to control this infection. That's one of the additions they made or change, you could say. Then the other change in episode two is that instead in the games, Tess doesn't die the way she does in the show like Tess dies because I, I believe it's Fedra who comes out all this way just for Joel and Ellie which honestly that never made much sense but you know it's a game so I just kind of went with it right and this one instead of it being Fedra it was the infected right in this version the infected are a little bit different you know before the show came out one of the things that direct one of the uh show producers said was that they weren't gonna have spores but they so the infected was gonna be a little bit different if you played The Last of Us, you know that one of the big things is that if you get infected with spores, you're also gonna get it. You're also gonna turn into a zombie, right? Or an infected, whatever you want to call it. However, in this one, spores aren't really a thing. But what they do have is that the cordyceps virus is growing underneath the city and have a fungal network able to communicate with the infected, which is interesting because I've I've read some some stuff that says that that is kind of ish possible. This kind of this all thing is kind of possible, I guess. Anyway, though those changes were great. So basically, you know, Tess gets taken out by the uh, she's trying to stop the infected because she's already bitten. So she's like, you know what, Joel, take her. This is her chance, right? All that is great, right? Episode three, though. Episode three is where things start getting got yeah, too emotional for me because episode three starts off with you know Joel and Ellie at this point. Tess is you know Tess has hit the uh, hit the ground. If you know what I mean. Excuse me, I had to get a drink of water, so I get a little bit heated in here. Anyway, episode three. Episode three. Amazing. Okay, we basically start off with Joel and Ellie walking down the road. They're starting to bond, but you know, Joel's uh at this point, uh, I think he's like fifty something, fifty-eight or something like that. So he's an old man, and he's a grumpy old man at that. They basically get the story of, you know, of one day Fedra started going around to sub uh country towns and you know collecting people to take him to the QZ. However, if uh, the QZ was full, you know, you had a bunch of people who could potentially turn into infected, so you gotta put him down. And then we get, what? Then we get, get transported to a flashback. Basically, this whole episode's a flashback, right? To the most, we get transported to a flashback to the most romantic, absolutely heartbreaking Romance story I have seen. I'm talking ten times better than Titanic in half the time. Maybe I actually don't know how long Titanic is, but all right. Basically, what happens is that we get to meet Bill. Now, if you if you played the game, you know that Bill is this kind of isolationist dude who works with who kind of has an association with Joel. I don't know if they would call him friends, but Bill is is this kind of survivalist isolationist dude who basically runs a town by himself in the game right he has a town that's always booby trapped and you know joel goes to him because they need a truck and he can provide a battery and a truck i believe and in that section of the game you know you go with joel and basically the entire thing is a side quest as to try to just get a, tr a battery truck that's i think and all that really happens is that you know them trying to get it Big story stuff is that you get to know Bill a little better. And I believe Ellie saves Joel. Excuse me. Might be misremembering that. But, you know, and the side note, one of the other things that happens that it's, it's pretty big, spoilers for future, is that you also get to meet the bloater, which is kind of this big armored clicker. Really great. But in essence, this section of the game doesn't have that much story. It is really just a side quest of trying to get the uh, truck. 
So it's great gameplay, don't get me wrong, you get to meet Bill, you get to know him a little bit better, but it doesn't have much story, it's not progressing anything, right? So I was kind of, one of the things I was wondering when I when we got to this section, when I first, when I, episode 3 hit and I saw Bill, I'm like, okay, well, what's, what's going what's gonna to happen? Is this going to be this big side story where we fight infected, or what's going to happen? Because, as I said, you know, not much real story is happening. However, we get transported to this flashback, and we meet Bill. And it's, and it's just fascinating to see how Bill set up this town, right? Saying so, all the every Fedra's collecting all his neighbors, basically. He's living under this bunker, right? And, yeah, man, Bill just starts to be... By the way, one thing is that the, the actor who plays Bill, I'm, I don't know his name off the top of my head, but he, I, he is the same actor from Parks and Rec who played Ron Swanson, so a, a part of me couldn't see Bill for the longest time. I just saw Ron, and I'm like, dude, Ron could total, Ron Swanson can definitely survive the apocalypse. I'm pretty sure it's Ron Swanson from Parks and Rec. It's the boss guy. Anyway, point is, I had, I had a bit of trouble seeing Bill at first. However, it took me, after a while, I got there, right? But it was fascinating to see how he started set up, right? You know, he started going to Home Depot, started, you know, making traps, started doing all this. He basically became self-sufficient, right? And then, I want to say two years later, like, there's just a bunch of time skips, right? So, the first scene is, you know, him, you know, setting himself up to by himself, right? And then, he meets Frank. Frank wanders into one of his pit traps, just happens to meet him, right? That is when the most lovely love story starts. So he meets Frank, he helps Frank, he gives Frank dinner, wine, and look, here's, here's one part, so one thing is that I didn't know Bill was gay when I played this game, See, I played the game, and there's one section where uh, Bill mentions Frank, but he said he's, oh, he had a partner, right? I didn't know he meant like, you know, that kind of partner. I thought he meant like, just like, you know, a friend, like a partner in crime, like somebody would help him, you know what I mean? I, I had no idea Bill was gay. So, but when I got to this episode, I was like, okay, I, I put two and two together. And I, you know, after a little research online, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, that's what they meant in the game. But anyway, so a little love story starts where, you know, they start, I think it's flirting. Uh, one thing is kind of hard to say is because uh, Bill is really awkward, so I couldn't tell if they were flir flirting. But anyway, they end up in bed together, which kind of confirms in that scenario is that they're gay. And I'm gonna be completely honest, it was kind of awkward for me. I'm a straight dude, so I don't I don't watch this kind of category. <laughs> but you know th that happens. It was a little awkward. But, you know, moving forward, you get to see you know that their dynamics move forward. And you get to see one thing that I thought that was interesting was. One, you saw the relationship develop of Bill and Frank, but also you got to see that how how Bill got involved with Joel. Because one of the things I didn't quite understand, maybe I missed it, was in the games, Bill is this grumpy isolationist dude who doesn't really seem to like Joel all that much. How? Why did they get into business together? And this one, it's like okay, Frank was more of the one who put them together in the same room and you know set up this whole trade thing, and that's how. You know, Joel got to know Bill. Anyway, this love story is continuing. It's a really nice love story. And then, you know, we have, we get to the scene where finally some raiders show up. A little bit of action happens. And, you know, one of the things that I thought was kind of dumb. I think I think it's been post, post, pointed it out somewhere in other places. But Bill gets shot, right? But he gets shot because he was a dumbass right there. He stood in the middle of the street and is firing at individuals. I'm surprised they didn't land a headshot. But anyway, Bill makes it, right? And then here comes... I'm going to break it down. I, I, I say if you haven't watched this show, I say give it a shot before I continue. Because I'm about to... Because what happens next is one of the saddest moments that actually generally got, got me to tear up. Because what happens is that, you know, they get old, right? Their years are passing by. I think at a, uh, I think almost 20 years they make it. I I don't quite remember. But they almost make it to 20 years, right? At this point, Frank caught something. I, I think it's a I think it's something in the brain because he seems to his body seems to be relatively okay. He's just old, right? But he just can't seem to have he seems to have weakness in the muscles. So I'm guessing it's neurological. Something's happening with his brain, probably misfiring. But 
he can't like you see him one of the things you see is his paintings right he's he has the strength to paint one side of bill but he doesn't have the strength to he seems to have muscle weakness at a certain point so it's, and anyway it's a whole thing right so something's happening with frank right so he can't quite continue right he takes medicine but you know this is like 20 years later right medicine has a shelf date that medicine's whatever he has he says that oh it, it was incurable back you know when before the world went to shit so whatever he has and the medicine at this point probably is way past its expiration date probably ha has little effect the man says basically goes to bill and says hey i've had a good life can't say we've had all good days but most of them were good and he basically says you know i'm gonna i want to have a lovely day with you and then i'm gonna drink some wine with some pills in it and i'm gonna fall asleep and that's when stuff started getting emotional because bill starts to cry and that's when i started to cry because i'm like no damn this hurts right and then you know the day progresses and then i started balling up when they started having a meal their final meal together you know bill and frank were all dressed up back where they met basically not where they met where they had their first dinner together bill prepares i'm pretty sure the same meal that they had together when they first met and then served them the same wine i mean at this point i'm losing it right and then you know but the part that gets me is when they finally get to the part where you know they put the pills in the wine frank downs it and then bill downs it too with the same gusto where you just know he's about to go out with his husband though let's call him <laughs> but he's about to go down he's about to go out with frank and i'm like dude and this is all happening in a flashback right I, I, at this point it's emotional right but none of that has to do with like joel and ellie so i was kind of confused like okay okay I was kind of, I really liked that, you know, big flashback, but at, at some point, it's just this massive side story that happened. Cut back, then we just cut back from the flashback to, you know, Joel and Ellie getting to Frank's little town. I mean, not Frank's town, Bill's town. It's always Bill's town. Anyway, we get to, you know, Joel and Ellie getting to Bill's town, right? And it was a little sad because, you know, Bill left him, for, uh, left Joel a letter saying, hey, uh, I'm, I'm dead basically here's all my stuff you can have all my stuff so you can protect Tess and at this point Tess is gone so it's a little depressing I really really like this episode it is a massive change from the game like I said it completely basically ignores everything that happened to uh, with Bill in his town and also Bill is dead in this version because in the game you know he's still alive doing whatever right I really liked it. Not only is this love story just really sweet and sad, but it is great storytelling. The actors, again, Chef's Kiss. I think I th for the most part, people were were praising this episode. One of the things I saw is that people were really mad, and some people were so mad because you know they they basically, like I said before, this is all a big side story from the, what's going on with Joel and Ellie. So people were mad, but they were mostly mad that they focused on a gay love story. I didn't mind it, mostly because it was good. Don't get me wrong. I would have been one of those haters if this story sucked. If they went with this, you know, Frank and Bill, right? And I watched it. And it was a horrible love story. If it wasn't entertaining, if it didn't make me feel emotions, I would also be one of those haters. But no, this was a really good love story. So I really liked it. Some people were just mad because it, I wonder if they would be, if they would still be mad. If it wasn't a gay love story, I wonder if it's the gay part they got them, or was it this big, you know, side quest thing, basically. This big, my bad, side story. Anyway, I really like this episode. And then we move on to episode four. Episode four is kind of this weird thing where it is focusing on Joel and Ellie's story, right? They're now, tr now they have a truck. By the way, they get a truck from, you know, Bill's town, right? That's the big thing that would happen in the game. They were just trying to get a truck. And in the show, they got a truck. They just got a... Then they were just left a truck, right? Oh, excuse me. But in episode four, at this point, stuff is 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 at the beginning. It's kind of just them bonding, right? It's kind of a road trip going on. And you know, we get to see Joel and Ellie's relationship really start to kick off because you know, like I said, episode three for the most part was about Bill and Frank. 
So we didn't really get to see Joel and Ellie, you know, bond and get together. But at this point in episode four, they are finally, you know, bonding, which I, I thought was sweet. But then they get to, oh, I believe it's either Kansas or Kentucky. I could be completely wrong. The point is they get to a city and here we basically, it happens where if you play the game, there's this big scene where, you know, they get attacked by raiders, you know, which is a really good scene. And if something very similar happens here, right? Joel and Ellie fight, fight I mean, uh, yeah, Joel and Ellie fight off these raiders and then make it to the skyscraper building, right? And in the back, and but we also get to see that, the, again, I, the, I'm going to say the city because I don't know if it's Kentucky or Kansas. The point is, in the city, uh, a revolution happened and they, you know, federal was basically overthrown. And the revolutionary leader is this lady where i'm gonna say the most out-of-pocket shit thing about this lady i did not like the lady that elite leads the revolution because her voice is so something about her voice just ticks me off it reminds me of you know she has this very condescending voice right and the other thing so basically her deal is that she her brother started the revolution or was the leader of the revolution but he was betrayed by a guy named Henry. And so she wants to go. Now that she's, you know, over, uh, taken over Fedra. No, I'm not taking over. Uh, overthrew Fedra and is now the leader, basically. She wants to now take revenge on all the informants of Fedra. And specifically wants to take down Henry because he got her brother killed. But I just could not stand her. Her voice was just so condescending, and she made so many decisions where I, I was left thinking, if you're the leader of a revolution, you should have other priorities than just basic. Because basically, one thing is that Henry should not be at the top of her priorities. There are other stuff that needs to get done before she can uh, enact her personal revenge. But anyway, also, one small thing. One one very small thing. The lady, the the lady, I'm not gonna say the actress, but you know the character is overweight. She's overweight in an apocalypse. I don't understand how how that how would that be possible in an apocalypse where food is scarce, and oh also you're under a Fedra oppressive Fedra dictatorship, right? How are you getting? I mean, how are you getting a surplus of calories? That's my thing. This is a small thing. I know it's I know it's just a weird thing, but it's just something my mind kept thinking when I was watching this episode. I'm not trying to be mean. It's just something that just didn't make any sense. Anyway, that's not the point. The point is, you know, Joel and Ellie get attacked by her revolutionary compatriots, you know, and Joel takes them down. Ellie almost mercs one, but you know, not exactly. And they, they end up in this skyscraper building where they, you know, get to meet Henry and Ben. Henry is, I don't know if that's his actual name in the game, because for the most part, I only remember them because of that one scene that I'll talk about later. But, you know, we meet Henry and Ben, an older brother and a younger brother. One of the things is that I am 99% sure in the game, again, it's been a while since I played the game, almost a year and a half. But I'm pretty sure in the game, Ben isn't death, but in the show he is. It's a small detail. I don't hate it. I don't love it. I think it's just a change that they made. This is one of those changes where I think they made it to be more inclusive to like you know people that can't hear. But I don't mind it honestly. I think I think I still think the biggest part that Ben had was that he kind of started to develop a relationship with uh, you know uh, Ellie. They started having this kind of like sweet little brother sister type of relationship, which they start which they have in the show during their, their time together. So you know. But, uh, Henry basically cuts a deal with Joel. Be like, "Hey, take us with you, and we'll we'll tell you a way to get out of the city, right?" And what happens is that basically, then the, the plan is basically we're gonna go through the tunnels. And this is the part where stuff gets a little fuzzy because I don't actually remember really what happened in that section of the game. But what happened in the show was that you know they go down through the tunnels. One of the reasons that Henry needed Joel is because you know Henry for the most part not this big survivalist like joel is not this big badass uh so he needs his help just in case you run into some clickers or infected because one of the things one of the one of the things that henry says that one of the good things Hen what uh, fedra did by the way i think this is in episode five 
one of the good things that Fedra did was that they actually drove all of the infected, I believe it's in Kansas or Kentucky, again, still don't remember. They drove all of the infected underground, right? That's one of the only good things. But the tunnels that they need to use to get away, away from uh, this lady's revolution, right? They have to go through the tunnels. However, Henry says that based on one of the things a Fedra soldier said, certain sections of the tunnels are have been completely cleared. And that's the ones they were going to take, right? So, you know, Joel, Ellie, Henry, and Ben go down through these tunnels, and they end up, you know, getting outside the city. However, they have the unfortunate encounter with an old man carrying a sniper rifle. And this person was working with the revolutionaries. So the revolutionaries end up coming, you know, because, you know, they basically, this guy basically spotted Henry, right? And they start coming out. And here's where things get, abs this is where the part where I absolutely hated this girl, right? One, she completely so made a ton of noise trying to get through this blockade of cars, right? Which I'm thinking, okay, in this city, yes, all the infected are taken out, but that doesn't mean there aren't more infected out there, right? So I don't understand, like, I get you trying to kill this dude, but at the same time, you're supposed to be smart if you're gonna lead people, right? I just, I didn't like that, right? And then, you know, Joel, because what happened is Joel ends up killing the sniper and taking the sniper. So he takes out the, the, the main truck, and that leads to an explosion, right? And basically the lady ends up cornering Henry, Ellie, and Ben, and is about to murk them. Like, she says, oh, well, Henry, I gotta kill you. Um, oh, and also, we have to kill the man and, what well, you know, Joel and Ellie. She doesn't say Joel and Ellie. She's the man and the, the little girl. Because they killed one, some of my guys who attacked them. Anyway, it was a weird thing. It was one of those weird, like, her voice made it so bad because she sounded so condescending as she said it. I am so, okay, I'll, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna spoil it quite just yet, but I'm so happy what happened to her happened to her, right? So she ends up, you know, but one of the things that happened, that I, that was, I am 99% sure that this didn't happen in the game. Because in the game, I remember the sniper, I remember them, like, going through a town, and they get, and Joel takes out a sniper, right, in the game. But it's the sound that attracts a horde of, uh, you know, infected, right? Here, though, because, in, in the show, because, they, the, when they, when Joel shot at the truck, it was an explosion, right? That explosion collapsed a tunnel. A tunnel of goddamn infected. When that, when they started popping out, I'm like, oh, damn. That's when stuff hit the fan. I am trying not to swear. God damn it, YouTube. Anyway, that's when things hit the fan. I'm sorry, I had to take another drink of water because uh, I've been recording for a second. And that's when we get to see something that I didn't think was going to show up in this show. Because I said before, the showrunners said that they weren't going to have um, spores. So, you know, I'm trying to remember back to the first game, one of the things that the first game had in the bill section, well, which wasn't really in the bill section of the show, was a bloater. A bloater, which is, you know, this big armored clicker with a bunch of spores, right? And he used to lug spore at you, and it was like this big tank, right? Because they said they weren't going to have spores. I don't know. Maybe I was just an idiot, right? But I thought, you know what? No spores, no bloater. I was wrong. Because as soon as that that tunnel collapsed, one of the big boys we see just starts climbing out. And I'm like, oh, yeah, let's go. It was just, I was so excited. I was, I was giddy when I saw the bloater. Because I knew... That bloater was going to take some people out. Some people that have been annoying me since I was watching these two episodes. You know, basic, so basically at this point, right, you know, Ellie, Henry, they have this big, you know, Ellie, Henry, and Bill, and, uh, Bill? Oh, no, not Bill. Ben. Ellie, Henry, Ben. Yep, that's right. They have an opportunity to escape because, you know, they have a big-ass distraction, right? You know, Ellie runs... I don't understand why exactly Ellie thought it was a good idea when you have a horde of infected and a big tank infected. She climbed into a car, right? With the, you know, it had a little window open. She climbed into a car. I don't under, quite understand the logic in that one because, you know, I feel like just running would have been your best option. But hey, you know, she ended up getting into a car. And then, I don't know why. I, you know, this is one of the things you know happens in zombie media. And zombie media exploits a lot, that, that sort of emotion. 
But when in that in, the, in that specific, my bad, in that specific section, right? A little girl clicker climbs into the car after Ellie, and I just found that depressing. I found it. I don't know why I found that depressing to see in a clicker that was a little girl. I don't know. I don't know why. I found that. I found that really depressing. Anyway, Ellie gets the hell out of there, and then I see another section where I'm like, I'm thinking, I don't understand the logic behind your decision, because Henry and Ben apparently tried hiding under a car. I don't understand why you would do that. One. These aren't dumb, dumb infected, right? So, I don't understand why you thought you could hide under a car. It just didn't make any sense, because obviously they were found, and then they were fighting off a bunch of uh, infected. You know, and Joel at this point is in the sniper helping them out, right? Anyway, they ended up making it out almost all the way, right? The big old bloater has taken out his, you know, just a tank, just ripping people apart. In a, in a brutal fashion, like when I saw, basically there's this like second in command guy that was helping the main leader, and he tried fighting the bloater, and he found out what happens to Joel in the game if you're not good enough. He got his head ripped off. I'm talking about damn. It was it was it was nice to watch. Didn't hate that character, but the character that I didn't like, like I said before, the main revolutionary leader don't know her name will never bother to learn it. She decides after that mayhem somehow made it out of that mayhem. She sees Henry and Ben and Joel getting the heck out of there. And she decides to hold them up at gunpoint. I'm like, damn, girl, don't you know any anything about self-preservation? You've made it out. And they're still infected coming after you. Run, right? But no, she decides to hold them up at gunpoint. I'm like... And then I see the little girl clicker coming up behind her, and I'm just like, damn, what's about to happen? You deserve it 100%. I'm not going to lie. I may have cheered a little bit when it happened. I'm like, yeah, get her, girl. Get her. But anyway, that was that was the end of the episode. That was that was the end of like this big, you know, getting out of Kentucky or Kansas. So I don't know what city it was, but hey, you know, it's a sucky city because, well, that's what it sounded like. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, I don't know why that made me laugh. Anyway, end of the episode. Again, kind of depressing. Because at this point, I didn't love Henry or Ben. I thought they were okay. They had a nice brotherly bond. Ben, ben and Ellie had a f nice interactions. But here is the part where I thought Ellie was a bit of a idiot. Because one thing that happens... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say what happens in the show and then I'm talking about the game, right? In the show... Ben basically, uh, you know, Henry tells, uh, Henry and Joel basically, Joel says, you know, you can come with us because they're at this point trying to find Tommy, right? But they say, you know, you can come with us. And they start a pawn. That's great. That's fine. Whatever. We get to Ben and Ellie. And Ben t shows Ellie that he was bit, right? And I'm like, okay, that's, I'm pretty sure that didn't happen in the game. In the game, he was bitten, but he keeps into himself, which again, I said before, is a trope that I don't really like, but it makes more sense because he's a kid. But in the show, he shows Ellie that he was bitten. Okay. I, you are a better person than the person in the game. Ellie, on the other hand, says, hey, don't worry, kid. My blood is a cure, which no, it's not. First of all, you just haven't been, you just, you just are immune. Doesn't mean your blood is a cure. She cuts herself and then puts her blood onto his bite mark. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I get it. Maybe Fedra education, maybe school isn't what it used to be. But that is one, not how viruses work, which is what most people think of when you think of zombies. It's not how fungus works. There's no way you smearing blood on a wound is going to make it so you don't get infected, right? And then she's then Ben asks her, "Hey, you know, stay up with me," which makes sense because he's afraid they're gonna turn and then hurt her, right? But sh she falls asleep. Okay, and I get it. Okay, fine, you're tired, but sh you're dealing with someone who's potentially gonna turn into a zombie or an infected. Are you gonna call them? I really did not like Ellie I, for that. 
I thought that was really, 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 I cannot emphasize how dumb that was. I could go on another 10 minute rant about how stupid that was, but I won't because my throat hurts. Because my voice will, I, I'll end up losing my voice if I do that. Anyway, I thought that was really dumb. Because, but, you know, Ben obviously ends up turning, right? That's not how cures work. That's not, this isn't that kind of game. So he turns and attacks Ellie. And, you know, at this point, Henry is, what I would say, super conflicted. Because, you know, he has to put down his baby brother. His baby brother that he has done so much to keep alive. And then he, he obviously puts him down. And then after realizing that, one, his goal in life is dead. And, two, he really... Honestly, I, 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 I can understand how he feels. Because mostly, I have a sister. And... If I had to, if in this scenario, if I there was a zombie apocalypse, right, and I had to put her down because she got bitten, I could understand the feeling of depression and the overwhelmingness how it would feel knowing that, like, I know that I would spend so much of my time and my priorities trying to keep her alive, and then just failing. I could under, I could, I could empathize with Henry, or maybe sympathize, because you know that's never happened to me technically, but. You know, Henry obviously can't deal with it because he decides, you know, he puts himself down. He just puts a gun to his temple and, you know, takes himself out of the running. So I can understand why he, uh, you know, he ended up killing himself. And that's basically how episode five ends. And let me tell you, I cannot wait for episode six. I, as I said before, I walked into this show thinking, hey, keep an open mind. Let's see if it's good. Because, you know, I've been just, you know, video games, movies don't have, video game adaptations don't have the best sort of reputation. But this show has not only met my expectations, but exceeded them. I cannot wait until the next episode. And I'm probably going to, I'm probably not going to talk about this next week because it's only going to be one episode to talk about. There's probably going to be other stuff to talk about. Most likely because if my math is mathing. Uh, Ant-Man and Quantum Man is going to be coming out, so I might talk about that. Anyway, this show has been great. If you have a chance to watch it, I recommend you watch it. I'm also thinking about, I might end up doing a little, like, I don't know, I might, I wanna, I'm, a part of me wants to make a, like an actual like dedicated, like, oh, analysis videos on this show. That's one of the things I, I want to do. But anyway, I really like the show. I think you should watch it. And hey. I think I'm gonna end up, and I think I'm gonna end this little episode here because it's been at this point and 52 minutes, which is uh putting a bit of a strain on my voice, honestly. Anyway, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. And hey, leave down in the comment section what are your opinions on The Last of Us, either the show or the video game. And hey, little controversial, little just a little controversy. If you want to discuss it down below. What did you think of The Last of Us Part 2? Because I'm going to be honest, if The Last of Us TV show does pretty well and they adapt The Last of Us Part 2, I mean, it's going to start some sort of flame wars cuz uh, you know, if you if you know about the if you know what happens in the game, you know. But let me know down in the comment section what you thought of The Last of Us Part 2 or how how do you think that adaptation is going to go if it happens, right? Anyway, thank you for watching and I will see you next week. Peace out.